Okay. We're good. So here we are again, starting the 2019 winter session board familiarization 101. Uh, we're like seven to eight weeks away with our fingers crossed for we'll have some snow and have an opening day here in North Idaho. A lot of you guys are looking for boards and we'll be looking on eBay. You'll be looking for sales. You'll be looking for swaps. Two big swaps here in the Coeur d'Alene area. One will be at the Spokane uh, Snow Show in three weeks in October. And then on November 1st through the 4th, somewhere in that period, will be another in the Coeur d'Alene area where you can find boards that have been used, some are taken care of, some you want to check out. Uh, you could even find one in the Goodwill store. You do what you need to do. But after you get it, this is going to help you to set it up properly. Okay, so one of the first things to determine is, is it a directional board or is it a twin? This is a directional board because the nose is longer set up here. And this is set up at about, to the center at about, 21 and a half, then it would be in the rear. So with the same center and, and the bolts, this is going at 19. So the tail is a little shorter than the nose, right? That's a direction. This one's a twin. So if I go to the center of each binding, I'm getting about 20 inches on that one, and I would get an identical 20 inches on this one. So this is more symmetrical, even-weighted tail and, and, and nose are equal, all right? They're cambered boards. So the one camber means there's going to be an arc that will rise in the center, like Ted's showing. No, that would be a standard camber. <laughs> and a lot of rental boards that you get will be reverse camber, showing an arc to the middle and the tip and tail being higher. So those are usually what you'll get on a rental board. So there are many hybrid boards in between, but let's not get into that. There are too many variables there. So understanding that camber is either bending up so you can bend the board through the middle or the middle is already bent to make your life easier and you're starting much easier without catching an edge. Okay, so one of the, after you have We'll go into a piece on determining where the where the boots, how the boots work, and how the boots relate to your binding. You can check your camber when you're at home by putting one of these boards on a table, and you can look. I mean, can you see under it, or does it roll up, or does it come up in the middle? And you make that determination, and that will do different things on the hill, but you don't know that yet. You've never stood on one. So if you set this up, and I set up the feet duck with both feet going out, that allows me a little bit of range in my hips, allows me to bend my knees out. It's a little easier to drop in the middle. So what Ted is saying is if you take a normal athletic stance for any sport, normally speaking, your toes will roll out, your, your heels will be slightly in basketball or whatever. That's where the term duck comes from. And it's a natural alignment for the body, allowing the hips to be between those two feet. And that's what's important. And basically, it's that simple. You, you walk that way. If you don't, and you do walk pigeon-toed, which Ted is showing now, please don't set your board up that way. You will have nothing but trouble operating your hips and knees. You okay. want to point them out a little bit, at least. Okay, so to get on a board, when you're in the snow, I'm going to put a foot on the board so it won't run away. By now, I've got a leash on my foot already, and then I'm going to put one foot in. And I want to do this standing up. So over the summer, work on bending over to get down to this foot. Not a hard thing to do, but time on that, Ted put the ankle strap on first, oh. which is the procedure. That's Always right. do that one first. Pulls the heel back into the cup, sets you up for the rest of the day. Never do the toe strap first. Okay. I've done that. And at that point, let me just show you this. If I've done this, I think, oh yes, and what do I normally do to tie my shoes? 
Oh, I straighten my legs and then I bend over and I have to do a whole bunch of stretch. So if you can get used to the idea of sinking this leg, it's easier to bend over it and, and reach it. That's to put your buckle on and then you would repeat the process over here. Okay. And again, bending down. And now I haven't had to sit in the snow. I haven't had to struggle bending over. I haven't had any struggle getting back up. So now I'm in the board. Right. So the plus side of that is, if you want to sit down on the snow, go ahead. If you like a wet butt and snow up your crack, go ahead and sit there. And you will find the reason to learn to put it on standing up. Because it's just kind of uncomfortable. Not like uncomfortable in the house, but uncomfortable out of the house so you won't like it all right ted also put his left foot in because Tef, ted is left foot dominant and that means that if he stepped on a skateboard he would probably step and push with that back foot in that direction there something in that manner whatever so if you are a person who steps onto a skateboard of any kind longboard skateboard whatever with the right foot forward set your board up to have the right foot forward now a quick thing Ted's going to do to show you what that looks like. Notice his toes are pointing us now. He's going to grab a pair of boots from the side. Okay. Any pair. And he's going to put them on the board that's right here, which means his butt's going to face us a little bit. But he's going to set it up to be right foot forward on the free board. On the free board. So, that's... So t yep, yep, there you go. Because again... Okay, now turn him, turn him to duck. Turn him to longer, duck. That's longer, that way. All right, so now Ted will step back. Ted's really good at following commands. Ted and I went to the same elementary school. That's why he keeps screwing things up. All right, so notice that on the right foot forward setup, the nose of the board that he pointed out to you is still the nose of the board. But now the heels are on this side. So that is the understanding between a right foot, goofy foot rider, or we could say switch, and a regular rider with the left foot in the front. This is what you will see. We would be facing each other. We would, the two riders would be facing each other. And we both so all, all toes are on the same side. And heels, if you look at those two boards laying down, are both on the other side. And that's an important thing to remember. That where the toes are is the side that we called your toe side. Where the heels are, are there. One is set up switch, one is set up regular. And that's an important aspect. When you borrow your board from your buddy or you bought it from wherever you bought, if they're not a dominant foot left or right, the same as you, the board's not going to be set up to help you the day you get to the mound. At that Quick point, enough to change. you'll have to find a tool shed outside in the freezing cold, undo all the screws, which if you haven't checked them before you got there, you may not be able to undo them and you may not be able to change the board that you bought. So be aware of what you're buying Check it out before you get to the mountain so you can have a nice day. So we hope you like this video and it should be informative because it told you about regular stance, uh, goofy stance and stuff. You can see it for yourself. Uh, rental boards are going to be completely different than everything we've shown you. And there will be some pros and cons to those boards. But we just want to get you started with board knowledge. So I hope you liked it. hope you subscribe and uh, thanks for tuning in and share it with your friends. Because we hope to grow. Thanks, guys. All right.